This is a video of three genetics questions for the Science GED. So there is some essential vocabulary that you need to know to get the genetics questions right on the Science GED. And there's essentially three sets of them, or three pairs. There's homozygous and heterozygous. Homozygous means that you have two of the same gene, and you can see how I've written examples of them here. Whether they're capital or they're lowercase, they're all the same. Heterozygous means you have a pair of different genes, one that is dominant and one that is recessive, which brings us to the next one. You have a dominant gene, which is the gene that get that is more strongly expressed. In simple genetics that you will see on the GED, it only requires one gene, such as a big T, a big R, a big A in the examples here. The recessive gene is the weaker, if you will, of the two genes, which means it requires two of them to be expressed. Now, the other set of terms are genotype and phenotype. Genotype is what we call the set of genetic material expressed as letters. So this represents the actual like DNA, uh, the genes on the DNA, if you will. The phenotype is the physical expression of the genes. So if you notice here, gene genotypes. Phenotype, physical expression. So phenotype begins with a pH. Phys physical expression begins with a pH. Might help it make it easy for you to remember that. So let's do some examples. Example one. Red flowers, big R, are dominant to white flowers, small r. Which of the following is correctly paired? So you in A here, you have big R, big R, and they're saying, is that, essentially, this is a question to you, is big R, big R homozygous recessive? And the answer is, it's well, it's homozygous, but it's not recessive. And so whether it corresponds to red flowers or not, um, big R, big R would correspond to red flowers, but it's not homozygous recessive. So A is wrong. If we look at B, we have big R, little r. It is heterozygous, but it says heterozygous recessive. And which is not something we say. And also big R, little r would correspond to red flowers, not white flowers. So B is wrong. C is big R, big R. This is homozygous dominant, but big R, big R is going to correspond to red flowers. So C is wrong. Now, D is big R, little r, which is again one set, or sorry, one uh, of each uh, gene, if you will. So it is heterozygous and it would correspond to red flowers. So D is correct. Example two, having a big T is dominant to not having a tail, which is little t. A heterozygous male is crossed with a female who does not have a tail. Which of the following correctly shows a Punnett square that depicts the potential offspring from this pairing? So before we look at the answer choices, one thing I would want to have um, you do is to actually write out what we call the cross. So the heterozygous male is going to be big T, little t, and it's a female who does not have a tail, which would be the recessive trait, which would be if you don't have a tail, it's little t, little t. So this is what the cross should look like. We need to look at these Punnett squares to make sure that we are crossing a big T little t with a little t little t. And if you look at A, we have big T big T over here. If you look at B, we also have big T big T. So these ones are wrong because they're not a correct representation of the male. I also just want to point out that this one is, this uh, Punnett square is completed correctly. This one is not. This one here should be big T, little t. This was not paired correctly. So this one is wrong in quite a few ways. Um, let's look at C and D. We've got big T, little t here, which is correctly represents the male. Same on this side. The female is correctly represented in all four of them. So now we just need to look which Punnett square is completed correctly. If you look here at C, this one has a little t, and then right here is a little t. So this one, one of these would come down, and the other one comes over. This is what it should be, and so therefore this one's wrong. Okay, so c is wrong, 
If you look at D, it is paired correctly all the way. You would end up with a um, sort of a one-to-one -one comparison or 50% to 50% would be heterozygous and 50% would be homozygous recessive. So D is the correct answer. Example three, being created, big C, is dominant to being curious, little c. Two heterozygous individuals are bred together. Which answer below shows the correct probabilities for each offspring genotype? Okay, so again, genotypes, what we want are the letters, okay? Phenotype would be whether or not they're creative or curious. So what we need to do is take these two heterozygous individuals and we're going to use the letter C. And I'm going to really make the capital big and the lowercase really small so that you can tell the difference. But this is what we're crossing. Big C, little c, cross with big C, little c. Then it would be expected of you on the GED to create your own Punnett square, just like I'm doing here, a box, and then put the T in it. Doesn't matter where you set these. They both are the same. And even if they were different, it wouldn't matter. So we're going to combine these here. We'll end up with big C, big C in this box. Big C is always written first. Little c will come over. Big C is still always written first. So that comes over. Little c comes down. And we end up with little c, little c here. And so if you notice, these two are the same here. And so we have one that is big C, big C. And we have two that are big C, little c. And then we have one that is little c, little c. And there's a total of four. So if we put these in terms of a fraction, we've got one-fourth, two-fourths, which is one-half, and then one-fourth. So if we go and we look and we try to see what percentage is here, well, it's not going to be 50-50. Um, this one looks like it could be correct because we actually have three different um, percentages, but they're saying big C, big C would be 50%. Uh, one fourth should correspond to or does correspond to 25%. So that's why B is wrong. C is saying that they all would be heterozygous. That's not correct. And so D does look correct 25% for one fourth. Two over four does correspond to 50%. And again, one fourth is 25%. So the correct answer is D. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video if you found it valuable and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like these. Visit the link below to passtheged.org to see more videos and learning opportunities that will help you get the highest passing score on the GED. And good luck.